All right, before we get started here, uh, this is for my friend Derek. He uh, he liked my build video, but he also loved the shirt I had on the other night. This one's for you, Derek. Uh, hope you like this one too. I think I own probably close to 60 t-shirts, and 50 of them have deer on them. Uh, used to be quite the avid hunter. Uh, haven't hunted much the last couple of years because of my back, but uh, anyway, so I'd show you that one, and uh, I'll try to wear a different one for you next time. All right, let's get started on this thing. Okay, uh, we're back for part uh, three, starting on the fuselage. I do have found one little thing here, right there. There is a uh, little hole, and the reason for it, this part of the frame, the wood right there is busted right here. So what I'm going to have to do is cut back this covering and patch that, glue that wood back and reinforce it. And then what I'll do is up here this big section here, I don't know if you can tell it on the video or not, but yeah, this is, you cut this out for the wing to stick in, so that will leave me a whole big piece there to use for patch material, so it's the same color. So we'll we'll get this cut out, and then I'll uh, get in here and cut this away, and we'll fix this, and I'll show you that here in a minute. And then we'll start putting her together. Okay, um, I went ahead and cut the covering off of the bottom of the plane two reasons. One, I'm going to cover the whole bottom of it red to match the, the wings. I, I want the whole bottom of the plane red. That way there's no uh, trouble telling which side is up or down. But also the second reason is you can see in here this uh, bulkhead is busted. So to get to that, to fix that properly, I needed to take this covering back. And I could have just cut a small piece here and then patched it and it wouldn't really show it was on the bottom. But since I was going to cover it red anyway, I just went ahead and cut it out. So we're going to go in here and fix this right now and get that uh, built back up and then we'll put the covering on it. Okay, we're going to try to get in here. I've got the side piece pushed back together. I just need to get some thin CA on it. Both sides. Okay, put that down in there. Now, what I've got to do, let me see if I can get this over here at a better angle. Um, ah, hang on a minute, let me get my camera straightened up here. Let's see if I can get in here and get this piece kind of back together and get some glue on it. Then we'll put another little piece across here to reinforce it. So I'm going to glue that one fracture right there and get it to stay kind of hold that in place ah, I got it glued to my finger that wasn't good you know, all right, let's see if we can get that well I may just have to put a whole big piece in there having a hard time getting it where it belongs I think that's what I'll do. I think I'll just cut a, another little piece to go across there. All right, we got the pieces out of here so we can tell where it goes. Kind of use that as a pattern for our length. All right, let me cut a new piece and I'll be right back. Okay, um, to put these new pieces in here. These are mixing sticks. They're hardwood. It's not balsa. They're really pretty strong so I will I will take my little saw and uh, miter saw and I will cut those to the lengths I need to fit across this fuselage in here and I'm going to need four or five pieces of it. I have a whole bunch of this and then what I'll do to get down inside there in that middle one is I'll use these vice grips to I can get down in there with that around this other bulkhead bar and clamp that together and glue it and get that all in there and I'll also need some tweezers to get the pieces down inside there and kind of hold them in place while I glue them so we'll get all those cut and then get that put together here in a minute 
Okay, we got the bracing all done. You can see right there. <coughs> where I've, I put a, two pieces, one on each side of the broken bulkhead, and then I put a piece across the top, and then down inside there. Uh, also did the same thing down there. That's that piece of the bulkhead was broken also. And I've got that all reinforced now. The side's good and tight. It just got squished in in the box. So got all that fixed. Uh, <clears throat> now we're ready to put the red covering on the bottom. And that won't take but oh, five or ten minutes. We'll get that done here pretty quick and then we'll move on and start installing servos and stuff. Okay, uh, we're ready to uh, cover the bottom. Got the wood all fixed in here. So um, another thing we're going to do is we're going to I'm going to cover the bottom of. I'm thinking about just doing the elevator halves because they're large and just leaving this little part yellow. Uh, kind of trim off with the ailerons from the front. I'll do just the opposite back here. Leave the small stab yellow. Cover these red. So it'll blend in with the whole bottom. So we'll do that too. That'll be pretty easy. Um, first thing we want to do is measure our widest point. I have a soft ruler, but this will work. I'm going to overlap this just, just a little bit right here on this uh, yellow. And what we'll do after we seal it down, we'll lay a straight edge on here, a ruler, and cut that. But anyway, I want to be sure I have enough. So I'm going to measure to this little uh, wing hole here. And we're gonna, ah, I can keep it still. Get over here. So it looks like five and a quarter. So I'm gonna go five and a half inches to be the widest point. Of course, it'll taper down as we go back. So now we want to uh, cut our covering out. Now, let's do what we did here before. Lay this out, get our sharpie, and we're going to go five and a half on this. Both ends. And let's see here. Five and a half. Okay, now, one thing I didn't look at is the length of this. Okay, we're going to have to splice it, so I'll have to put a piece here, it'll go almost to the tail, and then we'll have to put another little piece on back. That's okay, that won't hurt anything. So actually what I need to do is do the tail end first, uh, and I've got a scrap piece in there I'll go get. We need to do the little small tail section first so that when we lay this long piece on here, it's overlapping uh, uh, overlapping this piece back here. So in other words, we don't want the seam on top. We want the airflow going over the seam. So we're going to do the little piece first, then we'll do the big one uh, to overlap onto that. And you won't even hardly be able to see that seam. So um, let me go get a piece of scrap right quick. Okay, this is a piece of scrap. It came off of the, the piece we put on the bottom of the wing. As I told you, we'd use it later. Uh, shiny side goes up, and the dull side is your glue, and we've already got this uh, peeled off, this is the clear stuff. So all we got to do, actually, let's see, that's going to be plenty wide enough right there, so I'm going to cut that off about right there. And we'll use... I'm going to find what I did with it. Here it is. Use a straight edge. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to trim this. So we'll cut that right there. Okay. Lay that aside. Now, um, tell you what, let's do the big end. Alright, dull side down. I want to be sure and get a right side. The right one down here. And turn it around this way. And hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. We're going to go all the way to that edge right there. So, we'll just start right here in the middle. Heat that down good. Trying to push all the wrinkles to the outside. 
we're going to go ahead and seal it down over the edge a little ways. Uh, it will peel off after we trim it. So we want to seal it down all the way around the edge for now. So. get my little trim iron out. I forgot to plug it in, but that's okay. I don't need it right yet. Let's get that wrinkle out of it. Okay. Get that piece down good. We'll wait till we get the big one on up here, and then we'll trim the whole thing all the way down. Alright. We're good on that. Now, let me lay this aside. Cut our big piece. Let's get it laid out here. Flat. It gets down to the bottom of this roll. It really wants to curl up on you, bad. Metal yardstick. Anything out of your way, you want it getting flat. I'm gonna put it right on my line. We've got it a little bit wide, so that's okay. Hold pressure up here. Slight bit of pressure on the knife. It doesn't take much. I'm going to slide my fingers down holding pressure on this ruler as we go so it doesn't tear my covering. Alright, there we go. Now, we remember the clear coating that we have on the edge of this. We've got to trim that off on both ends. So, we'll just use this one. Get that up there. those off, throw them in the trash. Okay, now we got those done. Alright, now, yeah that's going to overlap perfect. So. All right, let's lay this out, make sure it do have a little hole in it right there. Didn't notice that. It's not really a hole, it's just a, it's a crinkle. I thought it was a hole, but it's not. So it, it should be okay. All right. Now, take my razor knife. I want to use a dull one for this. And scrape the, hold it down and just scrape the corner back and start peeling that off. Okay. Keep in mind which direction you want this to lay on there. So now I'm going to start with this end. I'm going to turn that around. And let's get it up here. I'm going to leave a little bit of overlap up here. I'm going to cut these corners and fold that down into that muffler compartment. So I'm going to leave that since I have plenty of room back here. I've got a good inch overlay. So we're going to leave that. Make sure it's centered. I got the same even amount all the way down. Okay, first thing we're going to do is start on this end right here. Roll that around. Get this all stuck down really good up here first. And we'll work our wrinkles toward the outside and toward the back. Just a slightly different shade of red, but it's not going to matter. I said it's the bottom, and in the air, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. So, I think this will work just fine. Now, we want to go right down the center of this and heat it to that center beam. And I'll go back over it. I'm going kind of fast right now, but I just want to kind of get it stuck down. All right. Now we'll go back again over that. Make sure it's stuck to that really well. This is going to have a balloon effect on the bottom of this. So what I want to do is start right here. I'm going to hold that. If I can, I'm going to hold that down here. Start going around the side of it. And what wrinkles we get up here in this balloon part will come out with the blow, blow gun, the dryer. 
Alright. Okay. Let's work our way on back here. And remember, any little wrinkles will be able to get out for the most part. Take this down all the way to the edge. Flat past where we're going to trim it. Okay. All right. Got that side. Now I'm going to turn it around so I can pull toward me. We'll do up here. Make sure that's all down. A little wrinkle there, but it'll it'll come out. We got to trim those holes back out for the landing gear anyway. Okay. Oops, I got a wrinkle back here, so I need to pull that, pull some pressure against it. Put this all down. pressure toward me as I heat it down. Okay. Got a wrinkle there, but it'll it'll pull out. Alright, let's really heat this down all the way down on the edge. Where we want it here. And we will well, I guess I'll go ahead and try to pull the wrinkles. I don't know. I guess I better trim it first. I better trim it to where we want it and then pull those out. Okay. Now, I am going to cut these corners right here. Cut them at a 90 degree. With a razor knife. And then you can pull that under with your iron to stick it good. And we'll take the little iron when I get it heated up and fine tune this and really that thing really cinches this down. Better than this one does. Alright. Now we have the bottom basically covered. We know we can trim this one. Oh, no, 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 it's covered here. All right. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and try the heating iron and see how this pulls down. Let me find it here. Let me go over. <coughs> Excuse me. Allergies. All right. Let's see if we can pull some of these out. Just a minute.
All right, see what a balloon effect that makes on that. You got to be careful though with this iron or this uh, blow gun. You've got to really watch. And different coverings are different. This is monocoat. It once you when you see it start to do its final stretch, you want to back off. If you go past that, just a few more seconds, it's going to burn a hole in it. But you want to keep it down there pretty close, but kind of keep it moving and keep that going until you see that last little wrinkle. Uh, stretch out and as soon as it does back off or you're going to burn a hole in it and you'll have to redo it. That's a nice balloon fit on there. Now all we got to do is to trim the edges. We'll take a break a minute we'll come back and do that. Okay, got the bottom all ironed down. Uh, got it trimmed. I trimmed it just shy of the yellow right here which is okay. I meant to kind of overlap a little bit. Um, what I did, I used this trim tape. This, what I have is a Carl Goldberg brand you can get it in all different widths. This is a 1 uh, This is a 1 8th, I believe. Anyway, you can get it all different colors, all different widths. It's fuel proof. It is very sticky. Once you put that on there, you can trim along your seams. It is not going to come off. You can see what I've done there. And uh, I'll show you how I put this piece on here. Let me get it started here. So I don't get my iron against it over here. Come on. Now I'm going to get this end of it stuck down where I want it. Then I'm going to peel the backing off of the whole thing. Because it's hard to do with that on there. You just got to be careful and not let it get, get against itself or down on anything. So now what I want to do is get a hold of the very end of it down here and keep pressure on it. Now I'm going to guide it. It's very flexible. You can use this to put canopies on, stuff like that. Um, now I'm just going to lay that, cover that seam. And like I said, when you get to a corner, you just bend it. It's very flexible and very pliable. So we're going to bend it to cover our exposed seam right there. And we'll go right down to the tail end. Mash all this down really good. And you'll have a hard time getting it off, but it is fuel proof. So you don't have to worry about that. Now I'll get down here to this end and I'll just cut that off slick with a razor knife. Okay, there we go. You've got a, a red bottom. Trimmed out with slightly darker red uh, trim scheme. Yeah. Now all i got to do is cut out the holes for the bolts here for the landing gear. Uh, and we're going to do the same thing to the bottom of the tail section the elevator has. And the only difference on this elevator is it's the same top and bottom except this has plastic hinges. They're pinned under this covering. Well, no, actually through the covering. But anyway, on the bottom side you can see the little pin head. So I always put that to the bottom. Other than that, it doesn't matter. It's the same. But I, like I said, I just do it because they don't show up here on top. So I put the pin heads at the bottom. So we're going to recover the bottom of these two elevators uh, with red to kind of go along with the, the bottom red scheme of our uh, plane and wings that we did. So, And that seam that I pulled apart on my wing, I had a couple of recommendations. Dave, uh, thank you. You had a great idea. Uh, a red Sharpie marker would have worked good. Uh, uh, Larry, one of my other friends, you know, said put a stripe down it like a black stripe or something. Well, this is basically the same thing. This is striping tape. I forgot I had it in the drawer. Uh, but I just went ahead because it's red. I just went ahead and used it because uh, I don't mind if it's all red on the bottom of the wing. But anyway, I think this plane is going to look a lot better being all red on the bottom and then the top's yellow with just a little bit of red on it. It's definitely going to be able to see which side is which out there. But it uh, looks pretty nice. So we'll get this... Uh, elevator has covered and then we can start gluing the fuselage together and uh, uh, putting parts in it. Now probably before I do that, probably what we're going to do after we get this done I get the tail feathers glued in, I'll probably start another section and I'll show you how I'm going to redo my canopy. This canopy is taped down with that particular type of tape, what I was just talking about, but it's yellow. Well there's two ways you can do this. A lot of times I'll put a little screws, a bunch of little bitty screws in it 
before I and then I'll take a razor knife and cut the seam right there and pull my canopy off so I can get in here to redo my pilot. This is blue on the inside which I don't like. I want that black. Uh, I'm not sure why they did blue. There's not anything else blue on this plane. It's red, yellow, and a little bit of black, black trim up here. So I'm going to uh, recover this black inside here before I put my little devil. And I'll put the little devil head in it with the rotating head. And I'm also scheming. Uh, I've got another little deal I'm probably going to do. His tail. There's a tail that uh, sticks up behind him. If I can find it here. I don't know if it had it laying here somewhere. I may have put it in that box, but anyway, he's got a little tail, sticks up with a little black fork on the end of it, forked. I'm going to put it, make a block to mount it in behind his head, and I'm going to make the tail where it swivels back and forth so he can wag his tail too. Uh, it'd be pretty cute when I get done with it. I hope after all this work, this thing lasts more than 20 flights. But <laughs> so anyway, we're going to probably call it quits on this one, <clears throat> and we'll be back with part four, and then we'll glue the stab and the uh, rudder and vertical fan in and then after that we'll probably start on the canopy and do that. I don't know I may install the servo and stuff first because I need to know which direction my servo is going to pull the I'll probably hook it to the ailerons and uh, and then I'll hook his tail to either the rudder or a three position switch where I can make it wag by itself and the head turn separate but what I'm going to have to do the head stem will come out right here the little tail will be behind that, but I'm going to have to build a block right up here to mount a servo end hooked to my linkage to uh, my head, and it's going to have to be below this line so it will clear. So it won't be too difficult to do. And then uh, I'll hook another little flat, little micro mini servo back here to the tail and have wires running up through here. I can, when I put the canopy on, I can just plug those in. I'll plug the head probably into the aileron and the tail maybe to the rudder, whatever. But anyway. I'll show you how to do all that and convert your canopy over to a, an interesting piece at the field. You get a lot of looks and uh, uh, people really like it. So that'll be probably a whole section in itself just redoing this canopy. All right, we'll see you next round. said I'll start this show and fire flew from his fingertips as he rosined up his bow and he pulled the bow across the strings and it made an evil